G'day ladies and gentlemen, Duckville here. I've got a uh, replay from the Korean ladder, I believe it is. It's up in uh, sort of mid to high masters level. These two players will be a Zerg versus Protoss starting down at the bottom left hand side. A young player from the local sea scene, he's uh, obviously playing as the Red Zerg here. It is Soundwave. And Soundwave, of course, uh, one of the personalities who I get to speak to a little bit on Twitter every now and then. You can find his Twitter just down there in the bottom left. And his opponent up to the top right hand side is a Blue Protoss. Don't actually know this guy, unfortunately, but his name is Revolution AR. Or Revolution R. Revolution R? I don't know, maybe he spelled. No, actually, there's no word Revolution R, is there? Is it? It would be ER if it was, I think. I don't know, whatever. Let's do this game. It is going to be a Forge or Nexus first fast expand. Of course, uh, this particular matchup has been uh, well, it's been bouncing around a little bit sometimes. And yes, guys, this is Neo Planet S. I know this one has been removed from the Season 5 ladder map pool, but I th thought we'd give it one last hurrah with uh, a final Protoss versus Zerg here. Now, this particular map is a, uh, you know, as we said, it is gone. Now, part of the reason for that, people just a little bit unhappy with with how this map plays out. Now, there are a couple of issues with this one. The third base, your, your standard sort of third base, is very, very far away. It's sort of, it's not necessarily as the bird flies far away from your, uh, from your main base, but it is far away as the stalker walks. Just down all the way down here, you have to walk all the way across. And a lot of players, uh, it, Particularly in uh, particularly as, as Protoss or Terran, it can be really difficult to try and set up a base sometimes at your third. Um, namely for Protoss, I, I would probably say the main issue lies with, but uh, uh, it's sort of it can be it can be troublesome to play this map out sometimes. And a lot of the time, you get to see very two basic kind of plays, very just sort of all in or, or even cheesy kind of games from Protoss players sometimes. And uh, you know that that's I think that's part of the reason why people just sort of sort of started deciding. All right, this map isn't as good as we first thought it was. Originally, it was played out. It was really cool because we have the two gold bases in the middle. I find it kind of ironic that um, people haven't really liked this particular map, even though it has gold bases, because it's sort of been a theme of, uh, of s slowly trending out of uh, StarCraft II's gold bases because people just don't like the way that mechanic works. But um. As we can see, Revolutioner has got his uh, his forge just about to finish up. Of course, the Nexus also on the way as well as a gateway. He's going to have a uh, an interesting ex wall. What? How do you... Hang on. Let's see. So you can get in there. Links can get in. There. I'm pr they can get in there, can't they? I'm pretty sure they can. I don't know. I wish I wish there was a way to like turn on the building grid just for a second so you could see what was going on that'd be really nice but um yeah so this particular map it gets to a point where Protoss kind of say all right well either I have to two base or I have to take the expansion if you do get it up like a lot of players will set up their expansion get the nexus down you, you tend to wall this off with a couple of gateways and then you can you know throw a cannon down in the back throw a cannon off to the side or something like that and uh, it, it just sort of eventually you get it rolling and then you get into a position where your third base is actually really secure it, it's kind of weird it gets to this point where it is actually very secure but anyway Soundwave on his side of the map has picked up his third expansion very quickly here has a couple of links patrolling just wants to keep an eye on where those little pesky probes are of course a wonderful uh, little tactic which you do see a lot of zergs do is they will always like to uh, send some zerglings around you want to check around about the map just to see if any of those probes have gotten in to try and sneak a, a pylon down for any kind of uh, you know proxy attack or anything like that but for the moment we actually have revolutioner not even really bothering to scout he's just sort of said all right well you know i know you're over here somewhere so that's all i need to know right now he's researching plus one on his weapons we can see that the probe's slowly starting to come out there is uh well there's no mothership core on the way just yet but uh, i'd assume that'll probably come out reasonably soon always nice to have her out to help out with uh, defense but then again he has spent a lot of his gas in the plus one to weapons it's gone straight into the cyber core as well to get started with that warp gate tech so the mothership core a little bit further uh delayed there so it will come out a little bit later but it's still going to be out eventually so we can see now that uh there is an interesting 
pylon placement in the middle of the map here for Revolution. I'm just wanting to set a pylon. I, that's a really weird spot. You don't often see people do that because it's not, it's not on the Zerg side where you can actually sort of warp in a little bit closer to your opponent or even just sort of peer off to the side. But uh, for the moment at least, that is not going to get scouted. So that's a pretty cool spot for Revolution. And we can see that he's got another pylon just down here towards uh, closer to this third base. But... Soundwave, we can see his Roach Warrant is now on the way, just over halfway done right now. He's got a bit of gas coming in from the natural base, and that's around about it. Most of it is all just minerals right now. So he wants to get his economy into a decent shape, and usually by around about this sort of 7.30 mark is when you sort of think, all right, there could be something fishy poking about. And, you know, as we can see, the cybernetic score is just about to finish up that uh, the warp gate takes. So, uh, in fact, we do have a couple more gates down the back for Revolution, and that's going to make a total of four. This uh, Overlord has not been able to scout out what is going on at all. Hidden tech and uh, or hidden gates, that is what he is looking for, but has not been able to find anything. Overlord turning about to try and see if there was something inside the natural. Sometimes people do like to put them just in the just in the sort of outer edge of the natural there, but uh, nothing of the sort this time. The uh, gateway flowering open here for Revolution, a robot facility twilight council also on the way so he is going to pick up a deal great deal of tech there as well as being able to threaten some possible attacks and speaking of which he's warped in a couple of zealots there so he is ready and raring to go evo chamber researching plus one weapons for sound waves so his drone count at the moment has just peaked up to uh, 59 60 sort of range he's still got one more on the way is picking up his lair tech so that he can get his roach speed also looking towards the more powerful uh, sort of playmaking tech such as mutalists such as hydras and these sorts of things and speaking of which I think we just saw the Hydra Den. Yep, Hydra Den will go down. So Soundwave is, uh, it's a great, Hydras are a pretty decent response to anything. If you can't scout out what your opponent is after, then, you know, you can certainly pick up the Hydras. They can be really, really helpful in dealing with gateway-based aggression. If your opponent do, uh, has things like these Immortals here, the Hydras can really help out with that. But one thing that Revolutioner does certainly have are these Zealots now approaching the third base, just going to stroll their way inside. I think there is basically no defense out on the field we can see the army supply is now just starting to peak for Soundwave. He's had no idea that this was coming. And we'll see that this hatchery is going to fall. No doubt about that. The Zealous just coming in. Mothership Core is just moving into position. We'll recall back home. And that is going to be it for the third base. So Revolution are just coming in with a very simple kind of attack. Save some of the Zealots, of course. It's always good to try and maximize the efficiency of your units, especially as a Protoss. Now, Protoss units are generally very efficient anyway due to either, whether it be tech, like these Stalkers, they have their Blink. Immortals have their Hardened Shield, which makes them last a lot longer. They're also very powerful against armored targets. But also, you know... You they're just generally very strong kind of units. So you want to try and maximize their efficiency as best as possible. You want to do the same thing with Zerg, but they're a little bit more expendable because they are slightly cheaper. Now, we can see that uh, Soundwave wants to look at a possible counterattack here. I'm not sure how successful that's going to be. Mothership Pure is just picking up her 100 energy to help out with a photon overcharge as needed. And now we can see the Roaches approaching. They've picked up their speed. They've got their plus one weapons. Their plus one in Carapace is a very, very long way away. But they'll see what they can do. If they can snipe out a forge, this would be quite nice. And this is part of the problem. Part of, well, not a problem, but part of a, a little unfortunate side effect, we should say, about having a forge part of the wall is that sometimes you do put tech at risk and that is the upgrade there that uh that well that revolution i really would have liked to have that plus two on his weapons there was uh, coming through but unfortunately he's not going to have that it buys soundwave a little bit of time it means he can get this third back up and running if he can get his economy back into shape here with these extra drones now just picking up some minerals and some gas here at the third base if they can uh, get into position if we can see a little bit more creep spread as well perhaps even out in this direction here just to try and scout out if anything is on the way then soundwave will have a little bit better of a time but the links have now picked up where the hidden pylon is they're going to try and take it down but i don't think that's going to happen the main protoss wall is on the way and there are 16 sentries here that is so so many sentries that have been warped in by revolutioner he's going to throw down another proxy pylon here just in case the other one does bow out but as we can see not too much on the map here for soundwave at the moment he really does not have too much and he's going to get caught out yet again so roaches 
uh, getting caught behind the force fields there, their bodies exploding across the snow, and the immortals and sentries and stalkers all just uh, wiping the slate clean there, and Revolutioner is going to march forward. He's got so, so many sentries. We need to see those, uh, we need to see those hydras coming out here from Soundwave as, as quickly as possible. He does need those guys out on the field. As we mentioned before, very powerful units up against simple sort of gateway-based compositions. When you add in the, the immortals and, and some really good force fields, then things like the, um, the Hydras can be a little bit less effective, but generally you do see Roach Hydra compositions doing pretty well against this kind of big stuff. The Revolutioner is going to push forward. He's on creep. He needs to be careful, but he has some wonderful force fields there slicing up the backside. But from the top, we see Soundwave moving inside, and Revolutioner is in a little bit of trouble. He's used up two of his time warps trying to protect the army. Back inside the main base, there is a warp prism that's trying to dance about, dropping in some zealots there, but it's not actually going to happen. And now, Revolutioner is forced to back off for the moment. The zealots now dropping inside the main. We're going to get a big warp in there of zealots. Yeah, it is going to be zealots just warping straight in. It's going to force Soundwave to make a decision. Do I try and catch this army out and kill them off, or do I head back home and save the base? Because these zealots are now going to work on absolutely everything in here. The uh, drones forced off the mineral line here, so that's a lot of lost mineral income. Drones trying to fight with these plus one zealots here, which is always a bad idea. And, as well, the drone count starting to fall down. 13 workers killed now, down to a total of uh, 50 at the moment in Soundwave. But he finally does clear up the natural. We'll hope to see him clear up the main as well, because then he'll be able to get everybody back to work. Some hydras also popping out. But uh, Soundwave, well, he's... He's really, really struggling at this point to be sort of losing out all of all of that supply. Uh, sorry, all of those drones. It's okay for the moment that he's got this massive army, but he needs to be very careful with it. He has to be so so efficient with the trades here as he moves about with that army. So he's not he's not dead at all. I'm just saying it, it's unfortunate that he did lose all of that. But here we go. Now moving inside the third base, no force fields at all, and that means that. Revolutioner is in huge trouble, forced to recall out, just gets out in the nick of time, escapes with some bruises and scratches there, a lot of these units were uh, damaged up. And we can see that he wants to move out for part two, or part three I suppose it would be, because we've already had part two. But uh, Soundwave now moving across the map, his Hydra's just a little bit slow at the moment, waiting for their muscular augments to be on the way, there it is. And well, he's gotten some of his mineral economy coming back up and running now, and as you can see he's going to try and pick off some of the front door. Again, we want to try and buy some time to get the economy back into shape. We may see him just drone up behind this, I'm not sure whether he needs to invest too much in his units at this stage, he's up at 174 supply and Revolutioner, well, his main base is getting a little bit low, so is his natural. He's got to be very worried at this point to be thinking, alright, I have a decent army, but I need to make some plays here. I need to get out there, I need to cut a bigger line through the uh, through the Zerg units, if you can sort of just cut a line, kill off half of them, and then get back to work with the other half later on, then that's always very good, but, you know, if he gets caught out of position, if he moves out of this choke point like this, then that is a really bad idea. Mothership Core and an Immortal goes down, still in a little bit of trouble as well. Soundwave catching a little bit of a break there. I think Revolutioner was half asleep at that point, but he does move out. Now, this is still a very powerful army, and we'll see how they engage, because this point could be very interesting, because there could be some force fields cutting across here, which may make this battle very interesting. And there you go, cutting out quite a lot of the forces, and the Stalkers and Immortals will go to work on the Roaches and the Hydras trapped at the front. I think that was a really bad idea for Soundwave to try and attack into that. He is going to have to fall back right now. He's got a, he's got a decent amount of Virtues and Hydra still, but he, you know, we've had, uh, we did have a bit of a, a struggling sort of portion, a depressive moment where the economy was in a little bit of a, uh, a dire shape. So he's going to fall back for now. Spire on the way. We've got the muscular augments. More and more Hydras now starting to pop out. So we can see that uh, Soundwave, he's sort of, he's been stuck for upgrades at this point just because of the damage done to his economy. And that means that he's going to have to just wait a little bit longer because the Zerglings, they've only got plus one on their carapace. The Roaches and Hydras have plus two attack, which is always nice, but their plus one armor is going to struggle a little bit against all of these Protoss units, and now pushing forwards, trying to trade some of these units as best as he can, he is going to fall back. A really interesting little line of force fields there from Revolution. I just wanted to try and segment as much as he can. It looks as if he's trying to push forwards towards a third base, but I'm not 
actually sure if this is going to happen. There was an overlord there that was uh, blocking it off with some creep, but now we can see that uh, another warp prism has made its way down towards the bottom side of the map. Keep in mind there are also a couple of pylons in the middle which can provide some resupply as well, but the Zealot's now going to charge in towards the third base here. The only protection is this single queen unless the drones want to come out and fight. And now Soundwave he's got some units positioned for a pretty decent concave coming in from the front from two sides and then also looking to come in from the back with some Zerglings just to just to distract all of those units as best as he can but now he's sort of moving into position we'll see how this is going to go because back at home he's been dealing with a few problems here at the third base war prism now making its way inside main as well queen trying to target that down it looks like it will get the kill and the lings were scouted out caught out by these stalkers are blinking ahead trying to get the donut on those zerglings but the third base is now gone so these zealots have certainly done their work and now Revolutioner is going to push in approaching from the side is another big cut of hydras and roaches and it, Soundwave gets a really good fight there just taking out a few of the units not really losing too many of them of, of, of his own and as you can see he is still sitting on a pretty decent unit supply sitting on 37 hydras we've got uh, you know 16 roaches and a couple of queens there as well if need be but he does need to deal with these random sort of proxy attacks and now the big thing in this game at the moment is that the natural is gone. The main is also gone as well for Revolutioner. So this is uh, pretty much his last legs here. He's got a little bit in the bank, but will he be able to uh, trade efficiently with it? It looks like the trade efficiently motto actually went his way there with some good force fields catching out half of the army of Soundwave and now a very very large Hydra base composition here from Soundwave as he wants to try and move forward and sort of defend this fourth base because this is now his third in a way because he only has these two mining bases at this point this natural base is also getting very low his main is now gone as well there is a little bit of exposed tech in here such as the infestation pit the spire the hydra den all these kinds of things but at this point the whole game revolves around this position here and the battle that is about to ensue coming in guardian shield activating hydra's going to work on the stalkers blinking back as best as possible to try and make sure that he can keep the stalkers alive as long as possible revolution doing a pretty decent job but oh my god these hydras are just huge here they've got their 2-2 revolution only has 102 keep in mind and it looks like wow the hydras just targeting down some of the immortals there you go gonna get rid of the last of them and the hydras and roaches are you wow with some good blinking i think no? Alright. Hydras, there you go. Hydras having a bit of fun here and uh, wasting away that Protoss army. It is down to a single Hydra versus three Stalkers and only two Stalkers will now remain. Zealot charging forward into the, the natural base. Going to try and cut apart this hatchery here. If they can get that, then that puts, uh, that puts Revolution in a pretty decent position. They do pick it up. It puts him in a good spot, but his mining is so, so incredibly limited right now. We can see the mi the main is gone, the nat natural's gone. We're long distance mining of the third base as well. But here we can see that he switched in some Templar, bringing in some Archons here, of course. Very powerful, very efficient units, unfortunately losing one there. But he is just wasting away a lot of these units. And the Archons, you need to be really careful. I, I don't like how he's just sort of willy-nilly just uh, losing some of these. And the Stalkers will blink away, but, uh, well... This has come to a very interesting impasse right now where both players are kind of struggling to mine. We can see that Soundwave, well he's got his, uh, he's got his, what is effectively a third base just up here at the left hand side and his opponent is slowly, slowly mining away at the third base here, just chipping away every now and then with his, uh, what is he up to, 52 probes at this point. But, you know, this is going to be a real struggle for, for Revolutionary, I feel. It's like... He can get these Archons out and he's going to add a couple more for a total of four, but, you know, there's there's no real, like, he doesn't have a huge tanking force. He needs to be so careful. Now, of course, Soundwave doesn't exactly have the biggest of opportunities here himself, but he has been able to lay down this hatchery here at the fourth base, and if he can take this one back, then th then this game will probably swing around. I mean, he's up to 51 drones and he's, he's mining off a close base instead of mining off a silly long distance base. So, what... I don't know, what we might see is a little bit of a battle here. These uh, units are kind of in a little bit of a standoff at this point. Revolution are deciding to back off for now. Too many roaches, too many hydras. Uh, well, two, two is literally what's going on there. Two 
Hydra's there. <laughs> now up to three. He's gonna bring the probes. He's decided it's time for bit by bit Protoss style. Here we go. Five Archons at the front. The probes also gonna be there as well. I'd love to see him try and mineral walk through to try and help them tank up some of these Zerg units, but this Archon, where is it going? You need to be very careful there. Just blasting apart some of the drones in a line there. Up to 12 kills that Archon. Probes at the front. Here we go. Probably will just be a battle here. It is gonna be really dependent on Soundwave actually microing back these Hydras and the Roach as best as possible. He needs to be so careful though. If he loses too many of the Hydras, then he could be in trouble. One Archon down. We're possibly looking at the rest of the uh, Protoss forces going down. He's going to come inside. The probe's actually very, very pesky at this point. They're even going to try and uh, poke away at that hatchery. More probes coming along, as we said before. There was around about, well, there's around about 40 probes up and running now, but the drone count is now reduced to a total of, well, it's going to be down to around about 18. And as we can see, Soundwave just trying to buy himself some time. He needs to start a step back to it backwards with those roaches and the hydras and not lose too many of them. I think he does have this one though. The roaches are still popping out every now and then. We can see a couple just being added to the fight. And the hydras and the roaches doing a little bit of damage to those probes. Just mineral walking them forwards. The probes at the front taking up what they can. Soundwave a little bit of mist micro there running about but he has taken out the archons and that should be game right there. Revolutioner taps out as a, a really interesting kind of, uh, I, I don't know, it was kind of like a base trade going one way, but, or with workers. That was a really odd game. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed that match. Uh, please jump onto facebook.com slash duckfield.casting, click the like button, and uh, that would be all very cool. Uh, also, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash duckfieldlol as well. Catch you later. Here. As you can see, 47 damage to bio units and then the 34 damage against other standard targets. His storms have also been wonderful, just spreading them out across the battlefield, doing really, really nicely there. And uh, for Minigun, he's been sticking with a very, a much more